Welcome to our first episode of Summer's News, Summer's TV. There's a lot to discuss because there's some amazing things happening in the city of Philadelphia. We have Councilman Alan Dom on the show today. I think we're all interested in how the city can raise revenue growth to help our schools. Alan's gonna give us some inside tips. We have Sandy Smith. Ask Sandy, one of the premier journalists in the city of Philadelphia. Definitely have to stay tuned for that. What's very, very exciting is what's going on with our waterfront. Everyone wants to know that. We have DRWC here to share some of that incredible info. You'll definitely want to take notes on that. Really good investment opportunities. We're also going to pop down to Port Richmond, one of the city's most exciting neighborhoods in terms of growth and development and the future. We're going to get a sneak peek with what's really happening there from a bartender at Gall & Company, a restaurant you definitely need to check out. Before we dive into our main story, we have a couple little flash news updates for you with what's happening in the city of Philadelphia. We all wanna know. First, Amazon.com, I think everyone's familiar with them. Well, they're coming to the city of Philadelphia, potentially bringing 50,000 jobs with them. Wow, we welcome Amazon, thank you. Second, workforce housing, that's coming to the city of Philadelphia too. What a great opportunity for people to find home ownership opportunities that the city has incorporated to be out there for you. And the third, Rail Park. The rumor is the Rail Park will be here by early 2018. That's true. That's gonna bring about tremendous synergy and development and opportunities for the city, as well as recreation and having fun, which we all like. So now, let's just dive into our main story. The waterfront is hot, very hot, especially right here in the city of Philadelphia with everything that's happening with the Cherry Street Pier, with the Ray Street Pier, and the I-95 cap. We had the opportunity to have an exclusive interview with Jody Milkman, who's the Director of Programming and Communications with DRWC. Now, what does that mean as a result? Well, to me, it brings about some incredible investing opportunities with real estate nearby all these little sections so get ready and stay tuned for our first great story on Summer's News. Fruit Street Hover Park, where we're standing in right now, is part of that half-mile park system. Right. It was originally intended to be a seasonal pop-up park. We had gotten a grant and we decided that we would pop a park up here to demonstrate that this would be one of ultimately one of the park locations in the master plan. Like a little taste. A little taste. Mm -hmm. um, and we got a small grant and we thought we would open for a month and we'd see about 50,000 people and that would be great. Um, but one month turned into three months and 500,000 people. So we stepped up and we raised the money and we brought in a, a founding sponsor that really helped us sustain the park and bring it back year after year. And sustaining these parks, because once you build them and create them, that's great, but how about maintaining them? Maintaining them, programming them, and operating them. Right. We have an entire operational seasonal team now that works with us that maintains all of our parks. Fantastic. And it's become a beloved part of the, you know, the civic streetscape in Philadelphia. Another reason why to visit, another reason why to live yeah. here. Just more to see and love. It's fantastic. And it's kind of a taste of Philadelphia here, where all of the, you know, food that you see here are from great Philadelphia I restaurants. I feel like I'm on the New Jersey boardwalk in Philadelphia. You don't need to go to New exactly. Jersey. We are Philadelphia's we are. urban beach and boardwalk. I did hear some buzz about the Cherry Street Pier. I don't know too much about that. Could you elaborate on that, or that is that is, secret? That is our newest project awesome. coming online. Okay. That will be online by next summer. It's going to be a really neat, unique combination of artists and food and beverage and opportunity. So there'll be great synergy and energy between the new Fringe Arts building that developed, the Ray Street Pier, and the new Cherry Street Pier. With all these piers and these parks complementing each other, which is amazing, like you said, the synergy, you know, is there a next step with Penn's Landing, a, a connector or, or a bridge, like part of the master well, plan? When you talk about the master plan, the whole idea was bridging the connection between the city and the waterfront. And all of these pier, these small pier park projects kind of 
pave the way for the ultimate big park, which so is park. which is the new development of a new great civic space at Penn's Landing, which is going to be the most dynamic of all of these. That park is going to span all the way from Chestnut Street to Walnut Street, from the Delaware River up to Front Street. It'll be, you know, almost a seventh square in Philadelphia. It's like a new district. It, it's bigger than Rittenhouse Square, and it's going to be this beautifully landscaped, tilted civic space. And it's just going to be an awesome park that people are going to want to live around, that people are going to want to play it's, it's, in, and that people are where people are just going to want to be. Very green, very down to earth. It sounds fantastic. It, it's and hard a great to. Addition. I wish it was here right now. Yeah, we want five it here. Years. Five in years. Five years. That was the question. You, in our years. in our lifetime. Five so years from now. That's we're, we're really. That's the plan. Yeah. Well, yeah. the idea we're already in preliminary design and engineering. It's already funded. So the idea is that it, within two years we could be breaking ground, and we're estimating it to be a three-year construction. Well, we are just extremely excited about all of this. We want to thank you so yeah. much. The waterfront is hot. It is. It is. And we're great. so glad that you're here to tell us and remind us how amazing. People are drawn to the water. They want to be near the water. Some incredible things we just learned about at DRWC, but now, why don't you tell us your ideas? Yeah, you know, what are your thoughts? What are your vision of the waterfront? Yeah, you know, please let us know. Send us messages on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Summers TV. We'll get back to you. Let's get all this information together and work collectively to make the city even more awesome than what it already is. Now I have the pleasure to introduce our new segment, Ask Alan. Alan Dom is a current city councilman at large with the city of Philadelphia, a very good friend of mine, current real estate mogul too, and past president of Greater Philadelphia Association of Realtors. Alan brings about tremendous business experience to city council, and we have a lot of questions to ask him. So let's just dive right into it with the first question. Alan, what do you think is the main steps that city council can take to help the city grow its revenue, development, and infrastructure? I know you have a lot of great ideas. What do you think? Thank you for asking this question, Chris. Let me just speak briefly about a very important topic, and that is the collection of delinquent taxes, and specifically real estate taxes. We currently have over $490 million of delinquent real estate taxes today in Philadelphia. $490 million. We bill every year roughly $1.3 billion. We collect 92%. We do not collect every year, Chris, $104 million. Now keep in mind, 55% of all real estate taxes goes to the school district. 45% stays with the city. So by not collecting delinquent taxes, the school district is deprived of the needed monies to educate our kids. So we put forth a program similar to uh, what New York City does. We did a tax lien study back in July of uh, 2016. The study showed the following. The study showed that if we implemented the New York City method, we would collect between 90 and 120 million dollars one time and every year an additional 40 million. And that was conservative. That was conservative. So clearly that's a great method for us to implement. It also said that we have protections for people who can't afford to pay. They would go into payment plans. And by the way, the city of Philadelphia, you're not gonna believe this one, Chris. The city of Philadelphia has payment plans for the person who can't pay, they can pay $25 a month for 150 years. No city in the country has this kind of payment plan. So the goal isn't to throw anyone out of their house. The goal is to work with those who can't afford to pay and find a path for them to pay something. But really the goal is to go after those people who choose not to pay. People who don't live in Philadelphia, people who live out of the area, or investors who decide they don't want to pay. And it's something we need to do. We should not be implementing new taxes until we've collected all of our delinquent taxes. Alan, we really appreciate you sharing your wealth of knowledge and experience with us today. You have some amazing ideas. I hope the city incorporates all of that. We have more questions for you in the future, so thank you. And we thanks for having me here today, Chris. Best of luck to you. 
Now, for our audience, what do you think about the councilman's plan to collect delinquent real estate taxes? It's a big problem. We need to do something for the city to bring in that revenue to help our schools, to help infrastructure and so forth. Let us know. Engage with us on Twitter, Instagram, the Summers TV channel. Leave a comment. Engage with us. We're very easy to define. We want to know what your thoughts are too. We are here for the first episode of Sandy Says. Who is Sandy? Sandy Smith, one of the premier journalists in the city of Philadelphia. I've really enjoyed reading his articles about tax abatements, about everything real estate and development related over the years. Now we have the opportunity to bring him on our show and ask him some insightful questions about what's happening in the city. Let's dive right into it with Sandy. Well, Sandy, what are your predictions of what happens next with the city's waterfront? My predictions for the future of the waterfront is that in the next five to ten years, it will at long last become the true mixed-use live-work-play environment the developers have wanted it to become for decades. On top of the housing that's already there, new developments like the Penn Treaty Place project and the capping of I-95 over the riverfront in Center City should put all the elements together for an honest-to-God neighborhood on the Delaware. That's right, Sandy, that makes a lot of sense. What waterfront development means for the neighborhoods next to it is that they're gonna have a really great amenity right across the freeway from them. Unfortunately, they have to cross that freeway, but they're gonna have parks, they're going to have restaurants, they're going to have shops, and they're gonna have new neighbors. All this is, can only be good. Well, it's time to jump into our Ask the Bartender series. We're fortunate to have Billy Slavin, manager of Gall & Company, and a lifelong resident of Port Richmond. Who doesn't know more about Port Richmond than the bartender? Billy, hey, cheers, a toast to you, a toast to everything that's happening in Port Richmond. We have some questions for you. Everyone wants to know what's going on. Cheers. This is the Ask a Bartender and I'm Billy Slavin. I've been a bartender for, uh, this will be my 20th year. I grew up in the great neighborhood of Kensington, or some say Fishtown, or some say Port Richmond, but uh, yeah, just up the block. Uh, the neighborhood's changed a lot in the past few years, um, mostly for the better. Uh, we've seen a lot of new construction, a lot of um, rentals. There was a period there where uh, things started to get a little sleepy, and it's nice to see a lot of the new, uh, a lot of the changes. We've had some new businesses, and it's it's been a it's been a it's been a wild ride. Well, when I first saw the space, uh, they had done a huge overhaul, and I wasn't expecting uh, it to look like this. I was nervous about how it would be received. I didn't want, there's a lot of chatter naturally about people coming into neighborhoods and opening up these bars that, are, that aren't for them or for the people who are from here or grew up here. We've done well and it's, it's been good, well received. Thank you, Billy. I look forward to having a drink with you soon and, and having a toast about Port Richmond. But for now, that's the end. I hope to see you in the next episode of Summer's News. Summers, real people, real dreams, real estate. <laughs>